a lot of times we've all been referring to James Randi, and we sometimes forget when we go around doing this all the time. And I'm just sort of interested, how many people have never heard of James Randi before? Wow. Yeah, see, a few. So, <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I have to fill you in. I mean, he is, he's the one who, uh, him, Martin Gardner, and uh, Ray Hyman, and who else started the modern skeptic movement. And Randy is now retired. He's a dear friend of both Susan and myself. He wrote the introduction to my book, which I'll talk about in a little while. But uh, you really should take a look at what Randy has done because he's been tireless and he has uh, fallen in the footsteps of Harry Houdini, who, who went around and uh, took psychics and mediums apart a long time ago. So if you don't know who James Randy is, please check him out because uh, he's a power to be reckoned with. So, before lunch, before I introduce Susan, I'm sorry, Susan's coming on next. I, 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 sometimes I get these impressions and, <laughs> you know, I, I just, I kind of have to go with what I see. I don't, I don't really try to uh, embarrass anybody. Uh, Unless it's really funny, <laughs> but but I'm just getting I'm getting some some thoughts that are going through the crowd, and <clears throat> I'm getting and this is just the weirdest thing. I mean, I'm getting from this lady here. I'm getting this image of an air a jet airplane flying really fast, but I also see balloons, and something about the pilot's birthday? <laughs> Does that mean, has that been on your mind? Yeah, I told that story yesterday. You told that story yesterday. See how this goes. She <laughs> <laughs> told the story yesterday, and, and I picked it up because it was fresh in her mind. And then over here, I mean, I'm getting that. You like to travel, like you said. You're going on a trip to some place you've never been before in the next six months. <laughs> no? Who are you going to believe, him or me? <laughs> That's how we work. We, yeah, remember, I have a special shirt on that I wore today, and it really says it all. I don't know. Right here, I get, I get the number 30. What's that? A little more. A little more? And the funny thing is, you both have been married three times before. Yeah. Oh, well, that's, that's true. true. Yeah. <laughs> See, now, here's where, I don't say anything, don't give me any hints. This is, where I'm going with this is, when does psychic entertainment, the things that I've shown you before, mentalism, magic, psychic entertainment, when does psychic entertainment become not so entertaining anymore, okay? And I think you can see by the reactions of people, when you start invading their space a little bit, it can be very uncomfortable. To me, and especially when I, if I was to say, oh, I see your grandmother standing behind you, and uh, oh, your murdered child, uh, I see water, you know? Your murdered or missing child. This is, to me, when, you, when, when a person breaks down in tears in front of an audience, this is not entertainment. And yet, in the United States, this is on every talk show, on every morning show, on every place where they need a filler. That's why, to me, it's crap, because it's a filler. <laughs> and anybody can do it who has the nerve and the ability to make bold statements as fact. Okay, that's all it is. It's a performance piece, just like any other type of magic, only it is not stated so, or by most people who are uneducated, believed to be a performance. So Susan and I, that's what we have really focused on. We use what's called guerrilla skepticism. We try to do what we can against the rising tide of this sort of, I call it blatant criminality of the worst type. Because if you are a person who has lost a child, or you are bereaved in any way, 
and somebody goes from doing a uh, thing with a magazine or something like that that gets you to open the doors to your suspend your disbelief and then they launch into something that's very personal it is not entertainment anymore and nowadays it used to be mentalists that's how they would start their show and then they'd go into the the seeing the, the uh, relatives and the, and the people who, who they were saying were speaking through them uh, but now they don't do that now they just go straight into it and uh, we are happy because we have we have uncovered uh, a lot of how these methods are beginning to take shape in new forms, especially with uh, the internet. Uh, the internet, in the old days, it was not as easy to get information on people. And uh, I mean, there's two different types of readings. For those who don't know, just real quick, I'll fill them in. <clears throat> there are cold readings and there are hot readings. A cold reading is when I step up to somebody and I say something like, you just came back from a trip, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> Who didn't, you know? I mean, every, <laughs> just need to go back a little bit. The point is, a cold reading is, is making it seem as if you know everything about somebody when you don't know anything. And it is a skill, although sometimes I, I'm not sure it is a skill. It's a, it's a, it's a method, it's a manipulation. So that's a, that's a cold read, and cold reading is done by probably 80% of the people who you see uh, on the stage or in a small venue. Uh, and then there's hot reading. Hot reading involves getting information on a specific person, committing it to memory, or making notes, which I have, uh, you know, and, uh, and then making it seem like you receive this information from the spirit world. And it's very convincing. And people will who don't know any better will come away saying, that person was so accurate. And they say the favorite line that we've heard for the last 10 years, which is, there's no way in the world the psychic could have known that. And we say, oh, yes, there is. <laughs> and we can prove it. And we proved it in a New York Times article. I hope some of you have read it. Susan will talk about it. You can look it up after today and, and get a, a real good idea about what we had to go through. So that's what we try and do. I mean, it's, it's a never-ending task. It is a, it's like a salmon swimming upstream. And the worse conditions get, the more these people pop up. It's like whack-a-mole. You just, you take two psychic, one psychic down, two pop up. But we have to do it. Because to us, this is where all of this is going, is the lie. We're all sick of being lied to. And it, it goes all the way up. Do I need to tell you? up the chain of command. But down at the bottom are the ones that we can really make people aware of. And when we make people aware of it, hopefully it's like magic, you know. you Magic is a way of thinking. Uh, if I show you something in this hand, I learned a long time ago, what's the other hand doing? Okay? So once you understand that, it, it can go into all different facets of your life. You know, from used car salesmen to uh, presidential candidates. You just look at what the other hand's doing. It's not paranoia, it's critical thinking. So, with that introduction, I'm going to introduce my partner, Susan. Uh, we just came back from a nice tour, and uh, she's got lots to share with you. So, keep your eyes and ears open. Here's the fabulous Susan. situations. It's, it's such a fun time that we get to do. I, we were just talking in the car yesterday about the life that we're leaving, leaving, leading is not the life my parents would have expected I would have done. I was supposed to be a good Christian mom who raised children, quilted, went to church, worked at the grocery store or something, had a good pension, and that was my life. Um, <laughs> they'd be very surprised what I do now with most of my time. So, I have 
uh, as Mark said, we just came back from a tour, and we do a lot of touring. There's, there's skeptic groups all over the world, um, and I highly encourage you, if you're going to be going on a business trip, or if you can vacation in a certain area where there are conferences held, you can see conferences that are much bigger with uh, maybe multiple days all over the world. And uh, we just came back from Christchurch, New Zealand, which was a phenomenal skeptic conference in um, there, the New Zealand skeptics. This is the second time I've spoken to the New Zealand skeptics, and we have a lot of fun doing a talk there. And Mark did a lot of mentalism. And the talk that I'm going to be doing today for you is one of the talks that I have given multiple times in the last, since September. We also, the Australian skeptics do a conference every year. The, this year will be at the Gold Coast, in, up by Brisbane. And um, there's various uh, skeptic groups in between, all over the, the world. And you can hopefully go and you can visit with them. Most skeptics are very welcoming people and they would love to have somebody come and visit and maybe give a talk to them. They call them skeptics in the pub, a lot of the places which is where you go and you hang out and you drink and you, you get a lecture. We're going to be trying to do something of the sort in Monterey uh, at the pub that we've been meeting at uh, once a month to do a lecture. So it'd be like one person coming and talking for 45 minutes or something, Q&A, lots of drinks, and eating, whatever you want to do. And so we're hopefully going to be able to do that. It's time consuming to put, put those things on and I have been very busy lately. The, one of the things I do want to mention, there's cards in the back for PSYCON. This is one of the biggest conferences in America. It's held in Las Vegas in October. And this is just last year's flyer. I have a few extra ones. If you want to pick them up as a save, save the day kind of thing. It'll be, I think, the second or the third week of, uh, Leonard would probably know, the second or third week of October. I mean, you guys got plenty of time to arrange it before. But this is the big conference. We get about 700 people at that. And obviously, you have some big names of speakers. But people like Mark Edward and uh, Richard are, are people who have spoken there. I, I do a conference uh, workshop there as well on a lot of the things that I'm talking about. And this is really exciting because you are my local group. You are my locals. You are, my, you are the people that I you know, can meet and have pizza with and, and see often. And the really funny thing is that I've never really given a talk in front of my local group, which is kind of funny considering I'm speaking all over the world and I've never spoken about this, these topics in front of my own people here. So we had some time, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, there's a lot of information and I'm going to skip a lot of it because what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a website at the very end and on that website there are links to everything I'm talking about in detail and there are articles that you can read if you're interested in beyond, above and beyond that. So, so also keep in mind, I'm going to show you a lot of things that have text on the screen and you cannot read the text. It's just not going to be clear enough for you to read. And I'm going to be telling you a little story about it. So I want you to kind of ignore that. You can look it up later. Almost all of it is Wikipedia. And you can look it up and you can take your time and read through it. In fact, I would highly encourage you to do that. For now, just go along with the story that I'm telling and just assume that, of course, I'm going to have to cut corners a little bit explaining things because I can't get into the technical aspects of every bit of, uh, of yeah, that's fine. I can't get into the te technical aspects of Wikipedia editing. You know, in general, it's just this or that. So, here we go. This is, um, symbolizes something that I've been doing for the last few years. And I, when I say me, I mean me and lots of other people. I run many different projects, I'm very active in the world of skepticism. And one of the things that I've been doing over the years is putting together these, these stings. What we're trying to do is we're trying to catch a psychic in a hot read. Now Mark explained the difference between cold reading and hot reading to you. And what I want you to understand is most psychics cold read. That is the most common way that a psychic appears to know what they're doing. And when they throw out those letters, like it's a J, it's an A, I'm getting a, oh yeah, it was Philip. Yeah, that was what I meant. So when they're doing that, that's kind of a cold reading technique. And that's the most common. <laughs> it is a skill in my view. It is, it's, it's hard to do. You have to speak quickly. You have to, whenever, whenever somebody kind of hits on it, you have to really uh, reverse a little bit and quickly go, that's what I, oh, that's what he's saying. Oh, darn, it was Anne. I knew it was something like that. 
they're very good at it. They're very glib and uh, very friendly. They'll hold your hands and, and just get the emotion. They're really good at reading your expression and your emotion. And they'll move from you to another person really quickly if they feel that they're getting any kind of skepticism from you. <laughs> they want to see this, the tears forming your face. But most people who go see a psychic are already believers because you're paying for this. So when you buy into something, you're more likely to want to believe it so badly because I just paid, you know, 40, 50 bucks for this or more. In some cases, hundreds of dollars. So they're more likely to want to believe. Um, what I what these represent is that I, and you will find these all on our website that I will give you at the end. These are the names of the different stings that I've done. So we have Operation Bumblebee, that was the first one we did, trying to catch a hot read. Operation Ice Cream Cone, Operation Tater Tot, Operation Pizza Roll, and Operation Peach Pit. And there's a reason why they have goofy, really ridiculous names, but I'm not going to get into it right now. Uh, Operation Tater Tot, you may have heard of this character. His name is Tyler Henry. He's the Hollywood medium. He's about 23 years old now. He's all over the airways making millions and millions of dollars. I'm one of his chief, chief critics. And in fact, after Skeptic Camp a few years ago, somebody wrote to me um, because, you know, we have media, the Herald and the Weekly and, and different places have been giving us publicity in the past. Somebody who did not attend the conference saw the article in the paper and wrote to me and said, what's going on with this Tyler Henry person? I don't know. He seems like he's real. He's, he's got a show coming out. So I did a lot of research, and that's when I became the, the chief critic of Tyler Henry, the Hollywood medium. So I write about these people extensively. They're all on my website, and um, you can learn about the tricks if you want to learn about them. What I'm going to be talking about today is just one really big sting, which was Operation Pizza Roll. That's the one I'm going to be talking about the most, because the goal was to catch a hot read. Hot reads are hard to catch. That's when they have information on you beforehand, possibly from uh, hearing from your friend who told them all about you, or maybe they were standing behind you in the elevator, or maybe they were in the bathroom and they heard you talking about your trip to uh, Alaska, or whatever. But one of the biggest ways of getting information nowadays is from social media. And Mark and I take advantage, full advantage of that all the time when we attend conferences. He gets in, we, we spend quite a bit of time on Facebook pages looking at your information so that he can hot read you in the audience. I'm sorry, it's given away. Last night we kind of cheated, we didn't really do that, but, but that's kind of how we do it. So Operation Pizza Roll, Mark knows a, had done a lecture for a New York Times reporter who publishes um, articles um, that are in the magazine, which is the more prestigious, longer in depth articles. And this author, this uh, journalist's name is Jack Hitt, H-I-T-T. -T. And he said, if you ever catch anybody in a hot read with inconvertible, inconvert, inconvert, with incontrovertible, thank you, proof, then please let me know and we'll do a story on it for the New York Times. And I'm like, all right, challenge accepted, I'm on it. So I tried many times to catch a hot read and there's and the adventures we went on trying to do that are extensive. And as I said, I've written about them on my website, and I'm happy to talk about them in depth some other time, but not at the second. So um, we went and we decided we were going to catch this try, try this one guy. And Paula, who was over here somewhere, she said, oh, way in the back, she sent me a Facebook ad. She says, hey, there's this one psychic that's going to be in Hollywood about the time you could come down here. That's like 10 days from now. Why don't you try this guy? I'm like, sure, I don't know this guy, I've never heard of him before. So we thought we would try it, and I named it Operation Pizza World. So this man here, this is Thomas John, TJ, because he can't stand it when I call him that. Um, he is, um, he's known as the, Long uh, the Manhattan Medium, he's also known as the Seatbelt Psychic, which I will get to in a minute. And so TJ has a couple TV shows coming out now. He had, he had a TV show for one season called Seatbelt Psychic. And Thomas John I'd never heard of, but he was going to be appearing in this Hollywood, um, this federal bar in LA. And I said, all right, mom, game, let's try it on. So I hope everybody here at least has a working knowledge of Facebook, right? You understand it's where you share your social stuff. Facebook has, collects data. You know, you put out stuff on your Facebook page when you have a birthday, people say, happy birthday, you know. So people can look at your Facebook page and get information about you. Even if you're not on Facebook, 
you guys who think that you're not sharing your information, I'm sorry, other people are talking about you. You're in pictures of other places. There's probably a page for your high school, your elementary school, your junior high, your college, where there's groups that are just about those days. And people are reminiscing and sharing pictures of you guys when you were in a band, whenever you were at a dance, when you were the most likely to succeed or whatever. Those pictures are all over and they're naming you. So there is information out there about you. Your cousin, your brother, your sister, your, your father-in-law, your mother-in-law, they're putting up pictures also and they're also tagging you. Whether you know it or not, the information is out there. Plus, you're also listed in a lot of obituaries as survivors to people. Once a psychic, or myself, or any of us, know a name, and generally a location of some sort, we can find out a lot about you, even if you do not have a social network, okay? So, sorry you guys, there's lots of ways a psychic can find out about you. So we went to, one of the things that we had done is I put together a group of people, Paula was one of them, uh, Jim also was one of them, in a lot of cases. They, what we did is we created fake Facebook pages, all right? So these fake Facebook pages were not connected to the people in who owned them. They were connected to just these fake people that we made up. We've been using these fake Facebook pages for years. We have many fake, fake, fake Facebook pages, many. They have a long history. So these people, if you were to click far enough out, you can see these people have been going to psychic events or ghost hunting events or whatever, because we use these Facebook pages over and over and over. We just change the names, we change the photographs, we change the locations, and so on, to use them again and again for different things that we do. And that's what happened with Operation Pizza. Uh, uh, bumblebee, ice cream cone, and ta uh, not tater top, because tater top is just, we were just writing about it. But a lot of these operations, they're involving the, um, the Facebook pages interacting with each other as if they know each other. He's got this look in his face, it's great. I wish I had a camera, because you're just going like, what? I know, what? I'm not even going to talk about this, it's crazy. Okay, so these Facebook pages, they interact with each other, they look like they are real people. And the people who are running them live all over the world. They're just volunteers that I know. Some in uh, New Zealand, some in Australia, some in uh, LA, some in all over the place. They're, and they're interacting with each other like they know each other, like their cousins, their college roommates, whatever they want to be. And they, they put filler pictures in, cat videos, um, all kinds of things. Um, Jim, raise your hand really quick, and Paul, raise your hand really quick. So, is it, nobody else is here that participated in that, right? Okay, oh, y'all, Mark, you don't. But um, if you have questions during the lunches of the break about any of these Facebook pages, talk to Jim and Paul. They'll, they'll be happy to answer questions, won't you? Yes, you will, thank you. <laughs> so, um, so, how the, the motivation is that for them to create these Facebook pages so that when we go to an event, we can go as a fake person, right? So what happens is, I said, all right, I'm going to go to this event with this TJ person. We have 10 days, it's happening in Hollywood, and I and Mark Edward are going to go, and I want you to create characters that are gonna have something happen to them that they want to talk to some person beyond the dead, beyond, you know, someone who's dead. And that is gonna, and I want the only person to know about what's on those Facebook pages is TJ. Not Mark and I. We have no idea what's on those Facebook pages. We are given a name. We went as Susanna Forsyth Wilson and Mark Wilson. Because Mark, Mark's real name is Mark Wilson. You can find him on Wikipedia and you can see that his real name is Mark Wilson. Uh, but his stage name is Mark Edward. And we needed, we thought we needed ID to get into the show to make sure that we were, you know, in case we had a show. That, uh, an ID. So I have, so Susanna is so close to Susan, we thought it'd be okay. All right, hopefully I have an off all. So what happened is we were given a small amount of information. So these pizza rollers, uh, Paula and Jim and other people, what they do is they went into a Facebook, secret Facebook group of their own making. They called themselves the pizza rollers. And within that, they discussed how they were going to tell the stories of Mark and Susanna Wilson and who we needed to contact. Who were, who were we interested in contacting? Now, those characters, Mark and Susanna, can't look like total believers, right? 
They can't look like they're so over the top, but they can't look like they're skeptics. They have to look somewhere in between, and they also have to look like they have money, because the psychic really wants to get a hook at us. So that's, that's what's going on. So these are the face, Facebook pages, and these all these screenshots are on my website. So you can look at these in depth and read them over, and you will see that they're in, they're in depth. Oh, this you were in this one um, too, weren't you, Greg? I see Gregory Davis right here. That's you. You're in this. That's my page. And Jane, are you in this one too? Yeah. So several people have helped in all these characters, and like I said, keep changing the names and stuff. So there's all kinds of people who've worked in these Facebook pages, and they're having these conversations about things. So apparently, Susanna Forsyth Wilson, that's the character I'm playing, has a twin brother named Andy. And Andy died in 2013 of pancreatic cancer. It was really sad. It's my twin brother. And he died. And, and, and you know, I've been hearing music, and, and I want to contact him. And he's been, it feels like he's been coming to me in my dreams. And it's just been really this time that I want to talk to my brother Andy. And, and so that comes out in the conversations in the Facebook pages. In Mark's case, he has a father who had died many years ago of heart problems. And Mark had a lot of distance between his father. Um, and we left that in because distance could mean distance emotionally or distance in mileage, you know. So um, Mark is now starting to come to the age where he's starting to have heart problems himself. And he's starting to go and have tests done and things like that because he's real concerned about his health. And that's what's coming through in these Facebook pages. As you can see, here's a picture of Susanna. She has shared this pancreatic cancer awareness. And these are different pancreatic cancer awareness things that are being shared on her Facebook page. I know this information, but that's about all I know about my character. I have a twin brother named Andy who died of pancreatic cancer in, I think it's 2013. That's about all I know. And, uh, and you can see this is the Facebook pages that Mark's characters having about heart conditions and heart disease. And if you were to read this in depth, you would see that the characters are having conversations with people who are also on the team, like I said, located all over the world, um, about Mark having possible you know, concerns about his heart and things <coughs> of that nature. So it goes on and on. And what ends up happening is um, that Mark and I go to the show. We pay top dollar, because that's what you gotta do. You can't sit in the back row. If you want to get called on, you gotta pay top dollar in the front rows. $161 a person. Money is funded by the skeptic community, because I reach out to people on Facebook and say, hey, we have a steam coming up, I need money, give me ten dollars each. And they all and people did. We were funded in a few minutes. So we we're able to I feel like everybody should kind of help out with these things, you know, and five or ten dollars a person. We all are buying into the, uh, these things instead of one person funding it. I, I feel like it makes people feel more connected to the work that we're doing. So Mark and I went to this the, to the to the to the uh, event. We sat about here, third row. Maybe 50 people showed up. And Mark and I do not know if we're going to be hot red or cold red. We don't know enough information about this person. We just kind of threw it together, like I said, in 10 days. Operation Bumblebee took us six months to put it together. But that was one of the first times we did it. Operation Ice Cream Cone was like two or three months. So this was like 10 days. Oh, I don't know if we're going to catch this guy or not. Let's, let's just try it. Um, it had been like a year or so since I had attempted one of these, so I wanted to see what would happen. So this is happening at a bar in Hollywood. Mark and I, as I said, are locked out of these Facebook pages. We don't know what's on those Facebook pages at all, other than what I've just told you. We know there's more content, but we don't know what it is. So when we show up, we sit down in our thing, we stay in character like a married couple, Kleenex in our pocket, at least I do, you know, wedding rings on our hands, which we're not married, and uh, trying to feel like we're, we're there emotionally. Now, one of the first things that happens is the manager gets up on stage, his manager, and she says, oh, look, everyone, I see so many familiar faces here today. Welcome. Which, that means hot reads, because these are people they already know. And that means they probably know them because they've read them before. So whenever they go up and say something about something about a person that they already know, it's like, well, you already know that. So that's a hot read symbol to us. The other thing she says is, Oh, go ahead and record your readings. I'm like, yeah, baby. So I pull out my iPhone publicly, turn, 
what they didn't know is I had a wire running up my back that I had already was recording everything. So we recorded everything from the moment we walked in. I went in the bathroom, turned it on, made it adjusted, and walked out. And then she said that. So we had a backup for all the recordings. So everything's documented. You can hear the full audio of the 15 minutes of Mark and I eventually get read on the website. And you can compare it to the screenshots. So you kind of know what's going on. This is TJ up here on the stage. He stood perfectly still for two hours with the microphone, eyes closed, listening. So he kept reading people in the audience, and I thought, okay. So as I said, a lot happens. I have a lot of different things happen that I don't have time to go into depth with. But what happens is he doesn't go to the person and say, you are the one that are, has a twin brother that has died of pancreas. No, that's not how he does it. He stands there and he says, somebody here is trying to get in touch with their twin brother. And then the person in the audience raises their hand and then they bring a microphone over to that person and say, I think that's me. And then that's when the reading happens. So I'm going to play you a few little hints of, of, of what happened. This audio hopefully plays well. So this is, when you look at it on the website, you'll see there's a lot of information about here about my twin brother and how we were born 13, oh, we're 13 minutes apart. That's what I said, I didn't know. So, uh, by the way, I do not have a twin brother, all right? I don't have a brother who died, any of that. This is all fictional, in case you haven't caught on with that. So let me see if I can play this. These are all real quick clips, like a minute. So this is, this is the psychic has, I raised my hand, they brought me a microphone, because he said, I'm getting a twin brother, blah, blah, blah. So once he brings a the microphone, then he repeats what he said. And this is me staying in character. Somebody's twin. Yeah. Um, I, I have to tell you, just as soon as I'm tapping into you, somebody's making you aware of cancer. Is this your brother? Did he have cancer? Yes. Okay. Because he's shown cancer. And I get in here, which to me would show the stomach or pancreas. Do you understand? Yes. So he's, he's stepping forward. Now this feels quite recent to me in terms of he didn't die over right? No. Okay, so that's me crying, trying to keep from crying. <laughs> in happiness and joy, that we just got a high risk. Okay. So um, this is the heart disease moment where Mark, then after he's done a little bit more, he goes to Mark and he does the same thing about Mark having a father who is distant and, and you're really worried about heart conditions and stuff like that. Their audio clips, again, are on my website. The, the, the audio clip I usually show in this time is like four minutes long. It's too long to show you at this point. But let me just say, he went to Mark and he said, and Mark, uh, well, he didn't say Mark, but he said, and you also have heart problems that you're worried about and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so wonderful. We're so excited. Mark and I are like, yeah. We got the guy. The problem is we knew that information. Mark and I knew that information. So at that point, we knew we caught him, but we didn't know if it was double blinded because we knew this information. And nobody from what I've ever seen in all the wonderful things that, things that have been done in the past, nobody I've ever heard of has double blinded one of these. So this is what we attempted to do. So here's this audio. This is really interesting. Now check this out. Now listen to how confused Mark and I are whenever we're going through this audio. But somebody's talking about they were smoker, 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 and they quit. I think it's your brother. Is that true? Did he smoke and then quit? Did he quit uh, smoking? Several. Did it was your brother, the twin, the twin? Oh, my brother. Yes. Oh, my brother. <laughs> no, but I think it's your brother, your twin. Did he did he quit smoking? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so he he quit smoking. Okay. Mark and I are confused because we don't know what's on those Facebook pages, right? We have no idea if we've caught it further. We don't know because we don't know what's on those pages. So whatever the psychic says, you know, he read us for two or three minutes and gave us the information we knew. So he's going on for 15 minutes. So what is he going to say in that other 12 minutes? We have to agree to and act confused on because we don't know. We just have to agree. And we're confused, and I just pretended to cry even harder. And the guy says, you know, kid, there's other people here. You're going to have to kind of move on. I'm like, but I'm really upset. Go ahead. You know, I'm really upset. So what happened is, and I'll kind of speed this up a little bit, is whenever we got all the way done, and he moved on to other people, Mark and I, I texted the pizza rollers, who are nowhere in the vicinity, right? They're, they're nowhere near. I said, what's this about somebody who's smoking? Who smoked? And they're like, oh, I don't know, 
anybody but if you spoke to what? Nobody, they're checking with each other. They didn't know what was going on. But apparently, you remember I said we're using Facebook pages over and over and over? Somebody had posted on Andy, this is my dear brother, my twin brother died of pancreatic cancer, Andy, it's so sad. He apparently quit smoking in 2013. I didn't know that. My pizza rollers didn't even know that. It was just something left over on one of those Facebook pages from a long time ago. The only person who knew that was TJ. That's the only person. And you hear him arguing with me. Because I'm like, I don't know. Mark's like, that's my brother. I'm like, no, I think it's a, he's like, no, it is the twin's brother. And I'm like, okay. I'm glad we got that on audio. So we checked with the pizza rollers afterwards, and that was factual. Here's another really odd thing that happened, and there was a lot of odd things, is he started talking about Michigan. And so Mark and I were like, Michigan, oh yeah, Michigan, we've been to Michigan. Oh, I went to Michigan, we, we moved all over the place. Michigan, yeah, of course Michigan, yeah. So the guy's like, yeah, because I'm reading something about Michigan. I don't know anything about Michigan. I don't know what's going on. Again, after the fact, we asked the pizza rolls, what's this about Michigan? And they're like, I don't have a clue. So he's like, no idea what they're talking about Michigan for. Well, it took a couple days, and one of the pizza rollers went and looked at this filler picture. Remember, I said we put filler pictures in. You can't read it really well, but it says Frenchman's Creek Cornwall. Cornwall's in the UK, right? So that's, that's odd. But what happens is, and you can all try this later, if you Google Frenchman's Creek Cornwall, you get this image, Michigan. Cornwall Creek Floyd. That's the first hit that comes up when you Google that phrase. <laughs> so we think this is where he got Michigan from, is because that they correspond with each other. I don't know, but maybe that's where he got the Michigan reference from. So Mark and I showed, we, we paid for VIP tickets, right? As you do, and we got a book signing, and we got a Q&A, and asking questions and things like that. Now, I like this picture, this is the selfie, that he doesn't know that we're totally skeptics and lying to him the whole way, and wired the sound, and he doesn't know. But what he, um, but, you know, it's all friendly to this. We've got lots of pictures with different psychics, it's hilarious. So one of the things you might notice here is Mark is wearing a pin from the U.S. Marines. And Mark has zero to do with the military. Zero. Okay? So he wore that pen, borrowed it from somebody, because in case the guy was cold reading, he the pen and, and start talking to Mark about military things. But he didn't cold read him at all. It was pure hot reading from beginning to end, almost verbatim through the Facebook pages, once we matched up the audio to the screenshots. So now what? I've got my hot read! I'm so excited! Yeah! The New York Times, we talked to Inside Edition, that's a long story. So the, the New York Times guy's like, yes, he went and talked to his editor at the New York Times. They were thrilled. They loved the story. It was so amazing, okay? A year later, and nothing has come out in the New York Times. I'm like, what the heck? So I contact the guy, and I said, Jack, what is the problem? You loved it. The editor loved it. You said everybody loves it. You tell you tell the story to. He goes, yeah, Susan. But the problem was I wasn't there. And the way we write stories in the New York Times, we want to have ambiance. We want to know. We want to have inside stuff. And we want to, I'm like, I know, but I got it. It's great. He's like, no, I wasn't there. Fine. He says, if you ever do another <laughs> one, I want to be involved from the beginning. Fine. Do another one. So that was Operation Peach Pit. So we put this on just for the New York Times. So he could go and watch it happen. He went to everything. I had Skype calls with the team that I had in uh, Pennsylvania that uh, we did a different psychic. And the reporter was able to sit on, in on every Skype call we had. He heard me give instructions to the team. And we did the whole thing all over again. Fake Facebook profiles. And the characters were uh, these people. And if you get a chance to look at anything Kenny Biddle, that's this guy here, Kenny Biddle. He writes for Skeptical and Card Magazine, which is uh, that magazine in the back. He has a website. He's, just a, he's an ex-ghost hunter. And he's brilliant. So this is him. And this, uh, Kenny Biddle, the glasses are recording everything. It's got a camera in it. And this is his wife, Donna, who for some reason they had her wear a blue wig because we wanted her to stand out in the audience. But she had a whole backstory about the wig, I don't remember. And oops, and these are all these are all skeptics. They
they all had characters. Everyone, somebody was dating somebody, who broke up with somebody, who was married, I don't know, they had these stories and they stayed in character the whole time. They were amazing. But this is Matt Frazier, who has a TV show coming out right now, by the way. Um, and you'll read all about him. Matt Frazier, here he is posing with all these skeptics here who he doesn't realize are, are, have, are you know, are busting him. But he did not read them because this person typically cold reads. So I went back to um, another year passes after Jack is still excited about this and uh, still no New York Times article. So I wrote to him and I said, come on already. And he says, I don't know what's going on. The editors are just, they're just, oh my God, I can't get it to be published. So if I was to take that hat of skeptic uh, Greek vampire fighter off and put on another hat, one of the things that I do is I run a very popular, amazingly popular Wikipedia editing group. And you'll see signs for it all over the place. It's called Rural Skepticism on Wikipedia. We are a Wikipedia editing team extraordinaire. We write Wikipedia pages about science, pseudoscience, and skepticism, anything that has to do with them. My editors are located all over the world. My editors speak multi-languages, and we write Wikipedia pages in all languages concerning science and skepticism and the paranormal, because we want a freaking amazing citations. The, one of the most popular places people are getting their information and the media is getting their information from is Wikipedia. <coughs> Even if you don't directly go in and type Wikipedia, you are getting information from Wikipedia. It is the biggest influencer besides YouTube right now. In fact, it is influencing YouTube. YouTube is putting Wikipedia links on some of the more conspiratorial sites as well so that people will get the Wikipedia page and, as well as the YouTube video they're reading about. Um, so, Wikipedia editing team, I have is a training team. We train everybody. We train everybody over a Facebook group, and it is amazing. It takes months to train you, but we are always looking for recruits. And I'm going to raise. I want. I want to show hands of my editors. There's Deborah right there. Uh, Jim's here. There's Deborah. Yeah, there's you guys. We do not understand how powerful and amazing this team is. We have 140 people located all over the world. Um, our Wikipedia team has written 1,200, almost 1,300 Wikipedia pages so far. Those 1,300 Wikipedia pages we track, and we're over 52.6 million page views. So these people, so people are reading these Wikipedia pages and getting so much information from it. I'm able to track these numbers because of Kyle over here who wrote a program for me. Raise your hand, Kyle. who will be speaking later. He wrote a program for me to be able to track these numbers, which is amazing. All right, so we wrote a Wikipedia page for Thomas John. I'm going to go a little bit over that clock, Paul, pulling this out, just let you know. I know we're way ahead of everything. So um, we wrote a Wikipedia page for Thomas John, Flanagan's his real name, because we knew that we were going to be getting a uh, New York Times article eventually about this guy that would be able to put on this page. Wikipedia is a one-stop shop for all information. So we wanted to make sure the New York Times article and everything else was on the Wikipedia page so that whenever the New York Times article came out, people would go to the Wikipedia page to get information about this person. And I need to point out that nothing we do is against the rules of Wikipedia. We are very careful to follow all the rules of Wikipedia. We also are very careful to make sure that everything is well cited. So we created this Wikipedia page for Thomas John just for that reason. Well, Thomas John, he was notable on his own, so he was able to have a Wikipedia page, but we didn't have a New York Times article, so it was very frustrating. And I was going around telling everybody, even my local skeptics group, any day now we're going to have a New York Times article. I mean, after two years, it's getting really kind of annoying, and people are like, oh, shut up, this is never going to check the New York Times article. So it was really frustrating, because it's kind of embarrassing. So what happened is, there's a Wikipedia article up. He has a TV show called Seatbelt Psychic. I am a writer for uh, Skeptical Empire magazine. And, um, and uh, so, so I was able to write an article about Seatbelt Psychic. Has anybody here seen this show? Oh, you won't admit it, right? <laughs> <laughs> so Seatbelt Psychic, I've since learned a little bit about it that I didn't know. And apparently it was a ride share kind of thing. They told people that we're gonna do a ride share, uh, uh, a new ride share. And why don't you come along? and will you tell us about it. That's what they told these people. What 
you see on TV, it looks like a real ride share. Yeah, I mean, it looks like a real live ride share where people get in the car, they put their seatbelt on, they drive away from the curb, and he tells you about your dead people that enter the car with you. And these people are like, what? You're a medium? Oh, my love sightings, that's amazing. And they start crying and they're filming it. And I thought there was a lot of things odd. And now that I know that these people were aware they were being filmed, so I, it's, okay, I understand now, but the problem is the, the people who are the typical viewers of this show don't understand that these people are known. They, they, they have to be known. So people would get into the car, there was, if there was two people getting in the car, there was always somebody sitting in the middle seat instead of the side seat, because why? The camera can see them better from that angle. Uh, so what happened was, this is the breakthrough, is this woman got into the car and he said to her about her dead brother, Skipper, and he was telling her all this information. And he said, I need something from you that you hold, something personal that has your energy. Can you give me something? And she reached into her purse and she pulled out her lanyard from work and she handed it to him. And you can see, he, hand, he puts it right here in front of the camera. So I just took a screenshot, flipped it over, and now I know her name is Wendy Westmoreland because the speaker's not covering up her name on her name tag. So I know who this woman is now. Two minutes later, I'm on her Facebook page, and I find this picture for Wendy Westmoreland, page totally open, and I see that she's got, um, she's posted, this is way before the, the, the Seagull Psychic thing is filmed, Happy birthday, Skipper, you will never be forgotten. Where do you think TJ got that information from about Wendy West Merlin? Could it be from her Facebook page? But how did he know she was going to be on the show and get into her car? Well, maybe because there's IMDb and there's people listed on here as actors. And if you click on their names, you can go and find that they correspond with the people who were on the show. Another thing that was a giveaway was, oh, the screenshot at the end of the show for a casting director, casting producer, and assistant, associate casting producers, casting coordinator, and senior casting assistants. Why do you need casting assistants when you're the only person on the show? Everybody else is supposed to be random people that you pick up off the street, right? Very suspicious. I went through Wendy Westmoreland's Facebook page and found out she's an actress also. So what's going on there, I do believe these actors and actresses did not know that they were going to be seeing a psychic. But I do believe they knew their name beforehand and were able to get enough information about them that they were going to do as I did and go on and find this information. Okay, so finally the New York Times said, that's it, Seagull Psychic, that was enough, we're going with this. So the New York Times article came out. This came out in February or March this year. It was flipping amazing. My phone and my email, I mean, I got up in the morning and it was covered from people, from producers and, and uh, people wanting to reality shows and oh my gosh, the flood of people who attack you for wanting to be, get a piece of you whenever you have a New York Times article. Because it appeared in the New York Times magazine and the newspaper and the website. So that's like two million people viewed it. I'm still getting people contacting me with questions and TV things and all sorts of stuff. It's amazing what happens to you. This is the New York Times, the front page of the New York Times for that day. We didn't hit the front page, we hit the front page with the lower half. And here it is. So even in the print version, we, we had it. And then also, oh, what the heck did I just do? And then somebody was like, hey Susan, I was looking at my magazine the week that I read every week, and look, there you are with James Randi in this like 200,000 uh, subscription uh, article. It's the exact same article. There's Thomas John. So the New York Times sold or uh, gave permission to the week to be able to run it. We even made the Drudge Report. You know the Drudge Report? We were on the Drudge Report, front page of the Drudge Report for the day. So we were everywhere. It was, a, it was amazing. And this, if you get a chance to watch, this is Thomas Westmoreland. He has a website, a YouTube channel called Holy Cooley. And he did a 15 minute, a 17 minute interview and, and summation of everything I'm telling you. And if you get a chance, you gotta watch this. This is hilarious. It's also up on my website. At the time, I think it's closer to 280,000, 280,000 views. And people are in the comment section are going on and on. Thomas, John, I thought he was great. I didn't know he was doing hot reads. Oh my gosh, I really love this guy. So it's been phenomenal. 
So what happened was, I was done, but then I thought, you know, I've got to keep pushing because I'm not pushing. So I started writing even more articles about it. And Thomas John is getting so pissed off at me. He's doing all these, you know, he's saying all these horrible things and he's just so angry and tweeting at me and everything. I keep, he says, I did a double blind test and here it is, the video. And I'm like, oh really? Let's look into that. So I analyzed it and I showed how it was done. You know, I'm revealing tricks over and over. And the thing about it is, is when I write about these things, because I'm notable for being a psychic, uh, uh, whatever, an expert on psychic investigations or whatever, because I have that and I have a Wikipedia page, everything I write for Skeptical Inquirer can go into a Wikipedia page. So the guy keeps aching me, you know? And I keep writing about it, and then the Wikipedia article gets longer and longer and longer. So, you know, one of the things that happened is Thomas John, and I'll do this as quickly as I can, because I know we're getting close to pizza time. Uh, one of the things that I, I did is one of my team members, and I have a team that does this, they looked at uh, one of his webinars. He was selling chakra webinars or something like that, so you can learn about chakras and, and, and that kind of thing. And during the webinar, he clicked off the screen for a moment. Do you know what I mean? Where he's filming himself, and then he clicks off the screen, it shows you his desktop. Well, this showed his inbox. So we just paused it, screenshot it from his inbox, and now I have a nice picture of what goes on in his life. And there's so much information. I've blacked out a lot of the phone numbers of people who are complaining about him, and so on. There's all kinds of information on here. So we have this. It's like, dude, you know? <laughs> You're psychic, you're supposed to know that this is not a good idea. But another thing he did in that same video is, you know, he just, he, when you're selling everything to believers all the time, you don't have any criticism from skeptics, you don't realize how much, would, would, you know, that somebody's going to be scrutinizing this. And if it's on the internet, it's there forever, right? So, I mean, even if he did this two or three years ago, I still can go back and look at it. Another thing he did on the same video is, you know how when you're on Google, the Google screen and there's that big box and you click in the box and you start to type a letter. It gives you preemptive text of things you've searched for in the past. Well, that's one of the things that happened. We were able to check this out. He has a Google, you can't read it here. You'll have to look at the article. But there, there's a, a Google alert for his name. That's fine. I, I have a Google alert for my name too. But he also has these Google, he has Google alerts for somebody named Pauline Misner obituary in Willamette, Illinois for the Chicago Tribune. Why does, he need this? Why does he need an obituary for somebody? He's psychic. You should be able to talk to him directly. He shouldn't be in a newspaper. Here's Phyllis Hedry's obituary, Racine, Wisconsin, Racine Journal Times. Makes me think he's doing a little hot reading, right? Okay. So anyway, I have a little bit of time. So here he is on, uh, this is a TV show. I'm going to eventually do some research on this. This is driving me crazy. Is they get this extra time from the, uh, like the daytime TV shows, and they just go on totally uncritical. So he, here is, he's gonna give him, he's been on the show before, so he knows these other people. This is the weatherman. His name is Derek Kevra, and he did a reading for Derek Kevra, and I'm watching, I'm gonna show you a whole, I wrote an article about it. Here's a second, let me see. This, this is like a minute, not even a minute long. He's acknowledging a large family. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's also, I you know, I want to say, just full disclaimer, I'm not really the best at communicating with this type of energy, but there's also a dog in spirit for you. So I don't know, I'm not really good with like dog breeds and stuff, but there is definitely a dog here that I'm aware of, but I don't know how it's really, I don't know if it's like a family dog, um, it's a female. Um, I would say a bigger dog, you know, a um, bigger dog, light colored kind of. Um, I, I feel like. She's definitely giving me the feeling of, of, of health problems at the end. So I feel like she's showing me like she had health issues, um, but she's showing me definitely being like connected to your family. I don't know what you got. Um, yeah, we had a dog, uh, Sadie. Okay. So, what do you think we found in a couple of minutes searching? Not on his Facebook page, his mother's and his sister's Facebook page, because it's easy to find them. He's acknowledging. Ah, look at Sadie. There's a whole story about how Sadie was really ill and she was old and she died and he was really sad. So for time's sake, uh, I don't really have a lot to, I mean, I got to speed this up really quickly. Mark and I's favorite saying, uh, Thomas John's uh, Wikipedia page increased, increasingly improved uh, over time. And you can see that nice picture that I took uh, 
you can't put pictures up on Wikipedia unless you own the pictures, but because I had a selfie with the guy and I clipped it out and I put it up there, it made it really pretty and everything. So he has a Wikipedia page, talks about Operation Pizza Roll in depth. His other felony fraud convictions that we didn't know about at the time were also there. because, And then at the point now he's at 31 citations. This Wikipedia page is better than most Wikipedia pages that are written. Um, the Gorilla Skeptic uh, Wikipedia group that I, I was talking about has written multiple pages. We've been involved in just about everything. And as Richard mentioned, the Samoa outbreak that's happening, that seven, over 70 children have died because of nonsense and these anti-vaxxers have gotten in there. And there's this one woman, she's a wife of a football player, and I don't know, okay. it's not the same kind of football we play. It's right. some, yeah. yeah. She's an influencer. She's on Instagram. Her name is Taylor Winterstein. So because she started talking about, uh, she's trying to get people to not vaccinate in Samoa. And she had a hashtag called Nazi vaccines or something like that. And it's been really awful. I'm not telling like, Most of these people who died in Samoa are children under the age of five because um, they weren't vaccinated. And so we wrote her Wikipedia page. That's one of the things we were able to do is the Wikipedia project that I have, we really work on a lot of things that are not just the things we'd normally uh, see, not just psychics. So this is the Tonga measles outbreak. This is the Wikipedia page we wrote about. Um, this came out just really recently. The New, New Jersey, you heard about this in the news, where the the um, uh, the anti-vax people in New Jersey showed up in the wrong room of a, at a uh, they were, yeah, it was a long, wrong room, and they told them, no, you're in the wrong room. The, the, the discussion about vaccines is going to be in that room over there. And they're like, no, you're not moving us. So they hung around and listened to them talk about transit authority or something like that in New Jersey. <laughs> but they were really vocal and they were really awful. So um, this, this news TV show, this TV place, gave them like five minutes of time, uncritical. So this, I'm not going to show you the video, but there is a video that's like five minutes of them just going on and on about vaccines. So what we did is we turned around and within a day we wrote the New Jersey Coalition for Vaccination Choice Wikipedia page about that organization. So the media and the people in the community will understand that this is a harmful thing. One of the trademarks of our my Wikipedia group is we put these anti uh, uh, alternative to pseudoscience medicine tag on it so that if you're only going to read this and this and get off the page, you know it's anti-vax if you're out of there really quickly. So this is my last two slides. Um, for, for you all to pull, this is your moment, uh, to pull out your phones because I'm going to give you a slide to take a picture of. And what you'll do is you'll see, this is the website, it's called About Time because it is about time. And I'll see people pulling out their phones. Um, and this is got, over here on the list, there's got uh, Susan Kermit, there's a little button right there, you push that. And then down will come all of the um, articles I've written about psychics and all that information. And down here it says 2019 grouping tour notes, and that's where all the other links are. So you can get all your information if you click on this picture and take a picture quickly, because I got one thing to show you, and then you were out. Uh, yes, yeah, pizza, you guys, I hope you're excited for me. Go back one, please. And this one. Okay, you can talk to me. Here, here, go. Okay. okay. So the last thing I want to show you is I've, I've gotten on his nerves. Somebody, this is like a minute long. Sorry, very for very quickly, but it's a little crowd. Um, Thomas John did a live Facebook feed just maybe a month ago. And um, somebody had written to him saying, hey, how come you guys don't find missing children? Have you ever found any missing children? And I've been attacking him constantly and the other psychic saying, why haven't they found all these missing children? You know, you're talking to grandma in her garden and how about what kind of, you know, wearing a hat in the garden, but you can't find missing kids? So, so here he's responding. This is kind of the attitude he has about you know, all this. Visit the visit the lost people, yes, I have them now. With some success and some not success, because I need the cooperation of the families. And also, you know, I have skeptics like that whack job Susan that stops me and posts about me. Who says, oh, well, if you know, psychics were real, then how come they don't find every missing person? Because well, that's what he thinks of me. So I thank you all. Thank you for your time. Thank
much about uh, editing Wikipedia, but so you guys put these up. Can't the counter forces come in and no? Okay. They, well, them. there's several. I get that question a lot. Thank you, Mike. Uh, the reason is, is because most people who are believers in the paranormal or anti-doxers and so on, they don't follow rules well. They don't understand evidence, they don't understand citations, and Wikipedia has very strict rules. And so they tend to get blocked really quickly because they'll put something up on face, uh, on the Wikipedia page saying, uh-uh, he's really nice, he told me all about my brother. So there. And they're banned quickly, so no, they can't do anything about it. Because we're really, really good at what we do, and we're really trying to make sure everything we put is factual based by some of the rules. You know, the first time you went to see TJ, how do you figure he got that information that we just met you? Oh, thank you, Robert, for asking. I didn't, I didn't explain that. So how did TJ know that we were at the event? That's a really good question. So the way Facebook works is you tag people. So when the team was had all the pages created and they were ready, they instant messaged TJ. They said, hey, we're going to be at your show. I'm really excited about, you know, whatever. And he instant messaged that. And what that was is it was saying, here's our Facebook pages. Look at them. <laughs> and then um, to make it even worse, he, I guess they were going through attacking him and saying, we're so excited. Susanna, uh, Susanna Wilson, whatever my name is, Forsyth, is so excited about going to the event on this day at this time. And so what it is, it's like throwing bacon out there, you know, to, to somebody. <laughs> and so it's like, hey, Aaron, look at this. And so they looked at it. And once they looked at that, then they were able to go to the Facebook page. Because the Facebook pages were all sitting there waiting for him, like a bait, you know, like a uh, right under a tree. And then there are hunters in the tree. And then the, they got a goat tied to the tree at the bottom. You know, they're just sitting there like, ah, is he going to show up? The camera's ain't gone. So that was the equivalent to, so he was able to do that. And then the other thing that happened is when Mark and I walked into the venue, we walked in, checked in, got our tickets, sat in our seats, I texted the pizza rollers, I said, we're in. And so what the pizza rollers did is they, somebody on the team went in and said, I'm here at the event at the Federal Bar in LA, so excited about seeing Thomas John today. So we tagged the event so that Thomas John or his handlers or wherever could go in, and it's like, Hey, I just got to dig on my phone. Look, here's somebody else in here. Oh, look, they want to see their brother named Andy who's well. So it was really quick. All right, so how are we doing this, Kathy? Deborah? They, they just need to food. Right, so what I want you guys to know is that we would love to have you stay longer if you'd like to hang out for lunch and you can interact with all the speakers you've seen so far and the speakers you have it and the people who have raised their hands and are volunteers that are happy to answer questions for you. Please come and hang out, and we're going to reconvene, I think, in 30 minutes after. We'll have food over here if you want to get some food. It is a donation, and it's really cheap for you to you know, buy a piece of pizza for a couple bucks. If you don't have any money with you, that's fine. It's on the honor system. But, we, but it's nice to stay here and kind of hang out with each other, because that's what Skeptic Camp is about, is getting to know each other. Thank you all. Yeah.